put Bonte and Butcher or Butcher and Bonte. That was fun while it lasted. That was fun while it lasted. The best part of waking up is morning roast in your cup. Not this morning. I was rooting against Bonte. At least Bonte didn't win. <laughs> that clock, that alarm went off. I swear to God, that alarm went off at 4 o'clock this morning. And I stayed in bed till 4.45 looking at my phone saying, this can't be life. What happened? It is sad, but it's true. It is sad, but it's true. Download the free Odyssey app. Just let me vent, Chasky. Let me vent. And listen to 95.7 game. ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs> nothing I can do about it. <laughs> there we go. You can catch. Always sounds like Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> you can catch live games ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Who was With that? With all the music, the cop in Louisville. Uh, when Scheffler was getting arrested before the Open. Some people say that that's the only reason Xander has two uh, majors is because of that cop. Oh, man. <laughs> hey, I saw that. He's the first guy. Uh, Rory McIlroy, 2014. Tiger Woods did it twice. And Patrick Harrington, I want to mm -hmm. say. Patty? Patty? Only, Irish. Only guys to win both the Open and, no, the British Open and the U.S. Open in the same year. He did not win the U.S. Oh, Open. Oh, PJ, 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 my yeah. bad. Yeah. PJ. And the PJ. first time my since bad. 1982 that the Americans swept, swept yeah. all the uh, yeah. major yeah. seven of there the last go. nine. There you go. See, your boy was watching. Now. Yeah, was watching it was really good. Stage. Truman was, was fun. Yeah, no, it was just It was a bloodbath. Yeah, it was a bloodbath. Olympics bath. next. Let's get the gold. Speaking of a guy who has a gold, Xander. Yeah, Olympic. Going back to back, maybe. Yeah, San Diego uh, boy. So, look. I don't agree with Rob saying that, hey, they're happy with just being relevant. No, that, that can't be the case. They they don't pay that money. They, I don't I don't agree with that take. I hear what Rob was saying, but I don't agree with it. No. They're not happy. They're, this, this organization is, is obsessed with winning that big one. Now, winning the big one is very, very difficult. We've all experienced that. Is this the toughest spot to be in in sports? Yes. Meaning you've been knocking on the door. Yes. But the only way to become truly satisfied with where your team is at yep. is if they actually win one. Yep. That's, That's what the, the hardest spot in yep, sports. I think so. And the Boston Celtics were just in that spot. Yeah. Good call. The Warriors were really in that good spot. Call. Good call. 2022, the Warriors weren't in that spot. I felt like that was, I, I hate saying it's a bonus Chevy chip, but we didn't, we didn't, you know, they got off to the 18 and 2 start. We're like, wow. Maybe they are back, but we weren't uh, 100%. Because a lot of people thought Memphis could beat the Warriors in that second-round series, and Boston was young, and we were worried after game one. We were worried about after game three. Like, damn, we're going to lose this. But this is a tough spot because there's the only satisfaction is to win that big one. It's kind of like before they won the Mickey Mouse ring, the Dodgers. Right. Right? The Dodgers yep. were kind of in that zone. Yep. They were knocking, in that zone. Knocking, knocking, yep. knocking, knocking, and it almost um, – all of the other regular season accomplishments became moot because they yep. couldn't win the big one. The Vikings of the 70s, yep. the Bills of the 90s. There you go. Who else? Uh, the Yankees right now with yeah. their judge and company. Really good call. If they man. don't win. Good call. They don't win it. It's, you know what? Like the Astros can go to the playoffs and lose. They got a couple. They redeemed themselves from 2017 for the trash cans and everything, and they won it. They got two rings. They're good. Philadelphia, the Phillies, and Bryce Harper. Know that Bryce Harper is on that roster. If they don't win it all uh, this year, good point. you know what? It's a good point. It's, it's it's a disaster. Same thing with the Dodgers. There's a couple teams. And now it's the worst spot to be in, but it's a great spot to be in because you know you're playing for high stakes. No doubt. You I know meant, you're going to be in the playoffs. I meant the worst spot in the sense of you're, if you don't win, you look back on that era yep. with – more disappointment Absolutely. than any other era. The Jim Harbaugh era. I just how I, did we look at that era? It's utterly disappointing. While while wildly successful, utterly disappointing. Yep. The Brian Sabian Giants led utterly Giants with Barry Bonds from ninety seven to 03. We look some back of my at that era. Years, some yeah. of my worst years. We don't bring up Bonds hitting seventy three home runs. Nope. We don't bring up Jeff Kent winning an MVP. We don't bring up JT Snow in the Gold Gloves or the great three to four year stretch Rob in half. We talk about Game Six against the Angels. Yep. We talk about Jose Cruz Jr. dropping a, uh, a pop up in Game Three down in South Beach, Miami, and then we talk about JT Stoke getting thrown out the plate in Game Four after rallying from a 5-0 deficit, only to lose seven to five. We don't bring up any of the good. And to our point last Friday, we were discussing this, and I, I got into a dark place thinking about this. That wasn't an act. That segment from one no, to one thirty, I was in a really dark place thinking about that Super Bowl because. 
all the greatness of beating Philadelphia, Debo having a hat trick. It's starting all 5-0 and and beating the crap out of the Cowboys on Sunday Night Football. We don't talk about the accomplishments in 2023. You know whose uh, highlights I've been watching all morning? Who's that? Lamar Jackson's. Wow. Lamar Jackson had a great year last year. Great year. Does anyone care? Nope. If he doesn't win one Super Bowl, yep. will it not be an utter disappointment? Even oh. though he's been a remarkable first ballot Hall of Famer type. No doubt. Right? No doubt. No just, doubt. I you feel can't like get elevated. He won't. You know what's crazy? I wonder. And I wouldn't know this because I don't live in Baltimore. But if Lamar doesn't win one, will they ever elevate him above Joe Flacco? Ooh. I, I, Joe Flacco had I one know. of his sickest playoff runs in NFL history. I don't know. And he's got the Super Bowl. I don't know. That's a great question. I don't I don't know how Flacco is viewed. Yeah. I really I don't, don't. In Baltimore, he's probably king. Probably king out there for that Super he's Bowl. He's got to be. You know, I'm looking here. Xfinity Mobile text line, 510. Give it to me. Donovan McNabb and the Philadelphia Eagles. Some of the best teams that I've ever seen. That era of football has kept him out of the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Donovan McNabb, and I'll say this right now, and this is a controversial take. Controversial. But Donovan McNabb was a better quarterback than Eli Betty. More consistent. But Eli has the two Super Bowls. Two great playoff McNabb runs. McNabb had unbelievable seasons. You, all the kids who played bad was like, who did he take? A lot of people took the Philadelphia Eagles because of McNabb and T.O. McNabb was special, but he didn't get over the hump. And it's probably going to keep him out of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. When you look at Aaron Rodgers right now, only having the one Super Bowl feels like an utter disappointment yep. in his career. Yep. But he has the one. It's mm-hmm. the same thing with Drew Brees. But he has the one. He has the one. And that's the one thing that, like, if you get one, it buys you all of the leeway. Like, when we bring up, like, I brought up Dan Marino's arm uh, in the green room earlier this morning. Most people that didn't see Dan Marino were like, I didn't win anything. It's like Dan Marino was amazing. He's my favorite quarterback of all time. And we feel like I, we, we, Discredit his entire yeah. career because he didn't win one. Starting was talking about Dan Marino, how he liked Dan Marino. Come, I grew up obviously. Dolphins were on TV a lot, and then you know you collect football cards. It's like wow, Dan Marino. He shares the same birthday as me, so I was oh. like, oh, it's September fifteenth, yeah, yeah. baby, right? But we watched a lot of Dan Marino growing up because they were always on television. Dan Marino is my favorite quarterback, and this guy couldn't run a lick. He was in the pocket, and it didn't matter who. He turned Orlando Gatson and made Orlando Gatson a thousand yard wide receiver. And nobody knows who Orlando Gatson is. He was special, but he doesn't have the ring. And he never got back after that second season. No. He had a dream year. We all thought, oh, Marino's going to be in another Super Bowl. He's going to be in many Super Bowls. He got to the one Super Bowl. Then he couldn't go overcome the Buffalo Bills, couldn't overcome the shortcomings of not having a running game. And the Dolphins would choke and choke and choke. And he never got that ring. But as a talent, he may have had the best arm. He'd sit there flat-footed to throw a 60 yards with a perfect spiral. The only loss the 85 Bears had was against the Dolphins. Yep. He shredded that defense. Yep. And they were a game away from going back to the yep. Super Bowl and facing them, but the New England Patriots beat them. Let's, yep. Upset them. Let's, let's spin this forward. Like The Niners don't have any Super Bowls in terms <laughs> of wins under Shanahan. I can make the argument if two quarters of Shanahan's entire career changes, we're having a completely polar opposite conversation. We're talking about Shanahan being the second best coach and maybe matching Bill Walsh in terms of Super Bowl titles. This is his seventh year? I think it's eight. Maybe it's eight. Wait, okay. 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Seventh season. Is it seven years or eight? Seven, right? Whatever. Yeah, but whatever you get where I'm going. I think Walsh was 79 to 88, so mm-hmm. 10 full seasons, I believe. Um, and we're having a totally different conversation. If two quarters of his coaching career are completely different, and it, it sounds like we're like picking this guy apart and we're we're picking at the carcass and all that, and, 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 and yes, we are. But like the difference between being a champion and going for a third championship is literally just a couple but, of quarters. And, and you know what? The reason why we're so hard on Shedda is because the expectations he set were high. And when you come in and you get labeled as a genius and this innovator, he's been special offensively. Things he does did with Jimmy Garoppolo, things he's done with this offense, Brock Purdy, nothing short of special. I mean, he is, he wins one and we're talking about him. Okay, George Seifert, Shedda Hill, who are you taking? Right now, I can't put him in that George Seifert conversation. Seifert has two Super Bowls. Two of them. And hell, he's got more as a defensive coordinator mm-hmm. with the 49ers. Been along for the ride for a lot for all of them. So um when it comes to Kyle Shedahead and winning that one, and the problem is, yes, you're right, Shasky. 
a couple quarters go differently. We're talking about it. We're discussing you, them in a totally different way. You can say that but about a lot of people. I know it sounds yeah. dumb. No, no, to no, no, say no, 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 no. It doesn't sound dumb. I would say this: part of the reason why those two quarters went in a different direction was partly because of Shanahan. No. He's got his fingerprints all over the meltdowns that we've seen in the in the Sheet Championship game. Now you can say Jimmy, Jimmy. Sure, Jimmy has a lot. He's got a lot to do with it. But Shanahan does too. Do you think Brady becomes Brady and Belichick becomes Belichick if nope. they don't win that first one? Nope. How nope. about Mahomes currently? If they don't win that first well, one against the Niners, it, it, it's funny we have a, we have a conversation about this, and I could now is the perfect time to bring it back up. <laughs> if the Niners win that Super Bowl in 2019, the pressure on Mahomes and Kelsey to win it the next year gets Tampa Bay, and then if they lose it, they're on two. Now all of a sudden, that conversation in Kansas City is like, "Damn, Kansas City hasn't won." Since the sixties, uh, the seventies, Andy Reid can't get the big one. Yeah. All of a sudden, Andy Reid's not in the Hall of Fame. He can't win a big one. He's a glorified offensive coordinator. And all of a sudden, they're zero and two. And all of a sudden, they're facing a different pressure. And all of a sudden, they may do d- things differently. Maybe they get Tyreek Hill the money. Maybe they don't trade Tyreek Hill to Miami. But since they did That's have that point. one, now they have that one, and they lost it. But I said, you know what? We can reset our books and sell my homes. Now that pressure of not winning the big one is in Kansas City, and they're having a totally different conversation. Maybe they don't get past Buffalo with 13 seconds left. Maybe they lose to the Bengals. It's like, oh, wow, they really can't win the big one. So that quarter of football in 2019, Super Bowl 54, that third and 15, changed the, death, changed the trajectory for Kansas City and the 49. It's, it's crazy. It is. If you boil it down to one play, Third and 15, where Troy Aikman, by the way, if you get that call, oh, boy, Mahomes needs to do something. This is a pretty critical down here. He needs to do something. And then, boom, they get the third and 15. And it changes how we view Shanahan in 2024, and it changes how we view the Kansas City Chiefs. That one play changed a lot. It changed the history of the NFL. It's, it's kind of crazy. You know, of course, you don't lose a game off of one play. No, you don't win a game on one play. With this, but that have. one play, third and 15, changed the course of history for Kyle Shanahan and the 49ers and for Pat Mahomes and Andy Reid and the Kansas City Chiefs. I think about the Super Bowl against Baltimore all the time. Hypothetically, they win that Super Bowl. However you want to say it, Cap runs it in, he hits Crabtree on the fade, wow. whatever. Where's Harbaugh? Where's Cap? Yep. Where's Willis? Where's so Gore? True. Where's Justin Smith? Like it's I so think true. about that all the time, and it's just like man, everything is different. But but with Shanahan, we're their Cincinnati Bengals. Wow. To his Joe Montana, like that's all I keep thinking about with Kansas City and, and Shanahan's like your. You keep coming up short to this guy, and we're going to be a footnote in their wow. montage when they're both going into the Hall of Fame, Andy Reid and, and Pat Mahomes, and it's hard to swallow because these are some of my favorite teams yeah, of my think life. Think about that, though. It sucks. Third 15 goes differently, and the Niners force a punt, and they run off a few more minutes. Quan Alexander catches that interception. Yeah, but that, you know, but you were able to overcome it. You get third and 15. Third 15. And you're able to milk about another three minutes off the clock. Chiefs need some Mahomes magic. Launches down the middle. Hill open. Caught. And they get it. Kansas City. The big play. This is can why you, it's so you, hard. Can to you find it? It may not, it may Gosh. be tough. But find the beginning of that play. They break the huddle. And Troy Aikman, I'll never forget being at the old studio. I was dialed in. And Troy Aikman's like, you know, Mahomes needs to make a play here. Kansas City, boy. We're getting down the nitty. He said something. It was like, wow, this is the play. That play, third and 15, helped change the course of history over the next five years. Now Mahomes and Kelsey are working on a three-peat. They're going into the season thinking about a three-peat. And I actually think they're going to get it. And the Niners, and we're sitting here saying, boy, this is our last ride. Ha! <laughs> It's our last ride. <laughs> I mean, if that does. It is unbelievable when <laughs> you really think hurts. about it. Forget that overtime and knowing the rules, Shasky. Third and 15 down in Miami in 2019, because Mike Florio said it. When Shanahan was like, boy, I would love to be back in that spot having a 10 point lead with seven minutes of change left in the Super Bowl. That's what I want again. Well, we had it. Well, I'm convinced that if you watch that Super Bowl back, they would have kept scoring and kept scoring and kept scoring. And like, once they got on a roll at the end of that game, it was curtains. Yeah, so that's why when you 
<laughs> Everybody say, oh, man, Jimmy missing Daniel Sanders. There's still going to be a minute 30 left on the clock. There's still going to be. We had an exercise, matter of fact. Now, right, we get to film on Mike in a second. Now, I remember the BSG days, right, Shasky? Because mm-hmm. you filled in one of those days that week. And Steiny asks, he goes, all right, what would you like in this scenario? If it plays out in Super Bowl 54, he goes, I'll never forget this. He goes, what do you want? Would you want to have the ball last? <laughs> Or would you want your defense on the field to shut down Mahomes for a chance to win the Super Bowl? And I remember I was saying, I remember I said, uh, I'd never forget. I was, I was like, I want to have the ball. I don't want to be in a position where Mahomes has the ball with the chance to win the game. And this is before he proved anything. And now we saw how that played out last year in overtime. Listen to what you said. I want to have the ball last. I want to have the and ball the last. And the took the ball first in overtime this time around. Yeah. They had the option. And then they were going to rush and try to go score a touchdown with a minute 49 left. Unbelievable. Let's go to Filmo Mike. Jeez. Unbelievable. Filmo, what's happening? Hey, man. Just in here. Oh. Missed opportunities. You know what I'm saying? I, got, I probably got a bad signal. I'm on the bridge, man. But It's all good. The bottom The bottom line is, man, they got to get it done. You, you know, you know, how, you, you know how, I, how I know the pressure's uh, ratcheted up? Jerry Rice getting into it with people <laughs> on the golf course, <laughs> asking questions. I swear to God, I feel Jerry Rice, but I swear, I be, I swear, I wake up in the middle of the night sometime cursing because the Niners didn't get the job done. Man, we gonna get the job done though. I believe in uh, I, I really feel if y'all been watching Debo, Debo's on a whole nother level of focus, man. For real, for real, he's the leader of the team, and I really feel like. He gonna have to get the job done. I don't know about the quarterback situation as far as how we gonna get B- BA in here and how we gonna get everybody paid, but I really feel like Kittle and Debo gonna lead the way this year for real, for real. I don't know what it is. I'm looking at his Instagram. He's super focused, man. That's all I gotta say. No, nope. hey, good call, Phil. Just 